All righty then. Uh, we have Radoslav Stankov here from Bulgaria with us, and uh, he will tell you all you need to know about improving your Git workflows. Uh, Radoslav is also an event organizer, and he will tell us something about the events that he does over there in Sofia and other places. Yeah. Hello, hello. Do, do you hear me? Okay, yeah. So, hi, I'm Rado. I'm uh, organizing the React Sofia meetup about, we mostly there talk about React, GraphQL, and all that like, related technologies. And today I'm not going to talk about React for a change, a bit different from my usual stuff. But because I usually talk about like uh, React, and I actually noticed a lot of developers don't know Git very well, so that's what I'm going to talk about today. Great, okay. And uh, like always, the Q&A session will be held on the Heapspace booth in 35 minutes. Thank you. Oh, that's actually good to know. <laughs> hey, thanks. Hello, so yeah, as I mentioned, uh, I'm organizing a lot of events and talking to a lot of people. And I noticed that people are not very familiar with Git and stuff like that. So first, who I am, like my name is Radoslav Stankov. I'm from Bulgaria. You can find me as R Stankov pretty much everywhere on the internet. And usually I noticed in my slides there is like code samples and stuff like that. And I noticed people do that, that a lot of cases, but I'm like kind of speed uh, sliding and it's like people have to, to do stuff. So usually this is my last slide of the presentation. I just have my presentation on speaker deck. I would tweet about it. So if you find something interesting, you, you don't need to like be a quick and throw a phone off, off over me. Just you can uh, take the photo. I work for a San Francisco startup called Produkant. And yeah, today I'm going to talk about Git. Like I noticed a lot of developers are, everybody uses Git nowadays. Uh, but the people who actually understand it are not so many. Like usually people just try stuff with Git until it actually works. Like, I mean, and you should trust me. I mean, I know how to do rebases. Like this is a very scary word. Uh, also, like a lot of people are, don't understand the difference between merging and rebasing and all of that stuff. Like it's <laughs> uh, kind of like difficult. Also, a lot of people do this uh, git push force push, which works initially, but then stuff goes bad. Trust me. <laughs> I have done this many, 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 many times. Too many that I was actually want to admit on a stage. So today I'm just going to tell you a bit about git, how it works. I'm actually going to uh, explain how Git works internally and how you can use a couple of minor tricks to actually improve your Git workflow and feel more confident. Uh, because oh, stuff not always looks like it seems. Like a lot of developers nowadays use GitHub or similar services and they actually don't understand what happens. Like for them, Git and GitHub are the same and they're actually not. Like GitHub is just a place to store your Git repositories and soon to be an ID. So, and in Git is like a storage engine actually, and uh, and it started uh, and it was created by Linus Torvalds, and it was focused to be just using the, this beautiful command line on a dark team, of course, on a dark team because that's the real team. And during the time, people start overcomplicated, like everything which happens in our IT community, we really like to overcomplicate things, to make things difficult. And we have all these like roadmaps, when to rebase, when to untax. And developers always get confused and they always like see, okay, what I have to do. And they're always like remembering those six commands or trying to use a GUI and they don't understand what's happening. And Git is actually a fairly simple thing. So today I'm just going to tell you about how Git works and how its internal structure works. So we are going to just go be uh, under the hood of Git. This is a place where no normal developer should go. But it's a useful place. So you always have like this directory in your projects called .git. And actually how many of you actually write this and like poked what's in the CD Git. Oh, okay. Oh, wow, that's a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> okay. So this is how usual th this directory looks like, and it has some weird, interesting stuff. And I would focus on this folder. It's called objects. Like we are developers, we act like objects. 
Soon we would like functions more, but someday. And Git is just a database, uh, object database, and all Git commands, what they do is actually they deal with the objects. Like the way Git works is you get some kind of object. It's some kind of content. This content uh, creates these object files. The object files have the type, the size of the object file, an empty byte, and the contents of the file. And this thing tr uh, passes through SH1 digest to create like a unique identifier of that content. So, and this uh, unique identifier is uh, the signature of the object. And this identifier is the object contents plus type plus some metadata. And this makes the objects unique. And this makes uh, also those objects are gzipped. So actually, if you have a lot of Git contents, actually it doesn't like keep copy of every file. It gets gzipped. So uh, it plays with the storage, but the idea here is this is how all those weird numbers you see at GitHub URLs are made. Those are actually the, cont the checksum of the files. Also, the nice thing about that, it's actually a secure thing. If I change the content of this object file, its, it's uh, ID becomes invalid. That means if somebody goes to your Git repository, changes a goes directly to the database of Git and changes something, this file becomes invalid, invalid and Git would complain about it. Like pretty much all those objects are right ones and immutable forever. And this is very useful, especially when you're dealing with uh, distributed systems where your immutability is your friend. The other nice thing is, uh, since uh, all those objects ha are stored in directories and for Lizzie lookup, they are indexed based on their first characters, third characters, or five characters. So if you go to GitHub, you write in the URL object slash and it's I and it's SHA, you can actually just write piece of the uniqueness part of the SHA. You can actually expand it. You can write the full SHA, you can write the half SHA, you just need to find what, whatever it is. In Git, there are a couple of object types. I'm going to focus on three of them. The, one, the, uh, the blob, the tree, and the commit. Why tree? Because I have 30 minutes to explain. Uh, so let's focus first on the blob. Uh, blob is just a plain file. Blob is the things we developers produce, files with code. For example, a JavaScript file like this one is just a, like a text file. It, the blobs can be binary files. and the blob is the contents of the file. That's what the object stores, the contents of the file plus the type blob. So blobs are obvious. The next one is trees. And trees are what you can see, uh, what you actually store, uh, group your files by. A tree can have links to other trees, like in this case, the tree which contains client folder, server folder, and readme folder, actually contains uh, two other subtrees and a file. So in this case, the tree I showed you contains a blob, a link to a blob, a link to a tree, and a link to a server. And what do I mean by, the tree, by a link? The link is the unique identifier of the SHA. Like, since they are unique and they cannot be changed, if I say that my blob, uh, this is what a tree is. It's just like a text file which has this format. And the format first includes the mode of the file because it was uh, designed for Linux initially. It's who can read, who can write. Then it contains what types of objects inc uh, are included in that place. And then it includes this reference. The idea of the reference is based on this, you can go to the object that database and find that contents of that file. And if it's a tree, you can dig infinitely until you stop having trees. And of course, it's the name, how it's going to be shown in your system. Uh, so if you rename a folder, that would create a new separate tree. And the final one, is something which we do when we want to like group multiple changes. It's the commit. It's when you go to GitHub, you have this UI where you have what's the commit message, who does it so far. And the UI here is very true to what the internal representations of the commit is. 
what commit have is just a link to a tree. Because this tree connects what was your system when I committed that. Like every commit just is a reference to the tree and the tree connect have links to all your up systems. And if somebody changes somewhere, let's say somewhere beneath the, the client tree something changes, the tree will be invalid. So in this way, Git supports like referential integrity. And the commit just links to the tree. And the commit also links to the commit it came for, its parent, because the parent also have like a unique identifier. Like the commit looks like, imagine like a text file which has this. It has the tree, which is what's the files included in this commit, what's the parent, what's the author, and what's the date. And this is sealed in time. When you make, once you make a commit, it is sealed in time. And if something changes, it invalidates it. So this has security layers here. Uh, the, the interesting here thing is uh, that uh, have, uh, the only commit, uh, some commits don't have parents. Those are like the first initial commit because they don't have parents. This is the starting point. And yeah, those are like the three main object types which define your system. Like uh, that's like pretty much what Git is. Like giving you this, you can actually implement Git yourself now. Uh, if you noticed, I didn't talk about changes. Like usually when you go to GitHub, you, what you see is I made this change. I changed those two lines between those two files and I changed that. And uh, where is the changes in general? Where the, they came from? Why, why I don't have any changes? Git doesn't keep changes. It just copies the whole file. So if you change one line in a file, it copies that file into its own object, the whole file, not the changes you made, and writes in it. Like, for example, and, and that stays forever in your repository. And people would say, yeah, but that's wasteful. You use so much data. Yeah, but Git actually gzips every, every, the object's database in a certain time. So if you have a lot of similar files, those actually compress quite well because the differences are so small. And the nice things about that com containing links to the whole files is when you do rebasing, you actually compare two different files so, and nothing is lost. Like a lot of times when you do a bad rebase, back uh, stuff, all those objects still are in your Git database and there is ways for you to recover them. So again, you have a commit. The commits have links to themselves, like the, from the parent commit. The commit links to the trees. The trees can link to their own trees, and the blob can, can in, it's linked from a tree. And actually, Git is like a, uh, it's uh, like a graph database. It links between objects. And again, as I told you, uh, all the contents gets, uh, gets its type, gets its size, the zero byte, the content, passes to SHA, which creates the checksum, gives you the object ID, and the, the types are those three types, and this is cryptographically sealed. If something changes, it in, you can pretty much check the integrity of your whole Git repo just by checking, okay, is the I, if, if the my object reference uh, is the same as the one I have. And yeah, that makes Git very secure and very safe to know that the, the repo I have is the repo you wrote and nobody m changed that. Like in Git, you can play with this database, you can do a lot of changes, but every changes changes the IDs of the objects. So you can actually know what's happening. So what are the radar files? Like this folder refs here keeps references. And the references are basically pointers to the commit. Reference, imagine just a text file where you say, uh, this is the object ID, the commit I'm pointing to. So, for example, a reference is reference to the master branch. Imagine having a file which is called master and it has just the SHA number of that commit. And this actually is what branches are. They just point to a commit. 
Uh, and there is a, a special ref which is called head. This is what you currently see in your directory. Like what's, what you actually see as files outside of that git. What's actually your world, what's actually your editor, what sees. Also you can have tags which are also git objects. Uh, which are, for example, a lot of people add tags for releases or the open source libraries. They also are references basically to commits. So we actually have a tag which points to a commit. Uh, also, you can have tags which go to branches, remote branches, which get things between the servers. A nice thing about what makes Git uh, nice to be distributed is exactly this is immutable structure of Git, how you can check two repositories and see what's the difference between them. And yeah, so how, let's see the next step. I actually played my hand here. So we have this. This is one right now in your repository. What happens when you make a new commit? Uh, so what happens is you create a new commit. The old commit points to the new commit. Uh, the new commit points to, the, to a new tree because you changed the file and you have a new reference to a new file. Uh, is this laser? Oops, yeah. And when you create a new commit, it's just passing references by. And in this way, you actually, it's a very nice way to track what's going on and what's going out. Going back to what I started my presentations, a lot of people are just memorizing six git commands. And there are usually more than six, but people only remember those and they have no idea. Like all those commands, what they do is they all work with those, with that database. Think about it as SQL commands. So in Git, we have, think about like four buckets of data. One is called unstage. That's what you are currently working on, but this is not included in the Git. Nobody knows about it. This is the unstaged area. Then you have a staged area. Staged area is the place where you put your changes before converting them to real Git objects, before this gets written to your database. Uh, the local is, uh, your .git object folder, that's where all the objects go to live. And remote, and this is the git, uh, is git or your friends or somebody else's computer where the repository stays. And imagine it like that. When you go, did, do git add, your files go from the unstaged area to the staged area. When you do git commit, the staging carrier files go to your, uh, get written to your local stuff. When you do git push, those goes to the server. When you get, get git pull, you're actually pulling the data back. Uh, when you go do git checkout, what you, what you do is you get your object database and put it inside of your staging carrier. And you can see all those directories, I think, make a bit more sense now. So let's go to, the, to the, this uh, very big problem with the developers. Should I use merge? Should I reach your base? Which is better? We developers always want to have like sides, maybe because most of us play games like Mortal Kombat when, when it's one against the other. But actually those things work in parallel. They're also very useful. So let's play, let's play a game. Let's say we have this uh, repo here and somebody made a change. They made a commit. They work. They create a couple of more commits. The master ref leads to the last commit. And at this point, you start working on a feature and you create a new branch. The branch just points to the start. You do, and your team starts doing more work on the master. There is more work on the branch. The branch does a lot more work. The master do more work. And now it's for us to do this uh, special ritual like uh, put some candles, start praying that we do a merge without any conflict. So what happens here is during the merge, what Git does is it checks what kind of objects uh, from those two commits are different and it combines them. It has a lot of logic about it and it creates what is called merge commit. Merge commit says, yeah, I had this other branch, I had this branch and the merge commit is a commit who has two parents because it combines those two. And this is how branching works. And in a lot of times, yeah, you have conflicts and in this uh, merge commit, you actually made more changes and create new objects. But actually all your changes from the previous commits are still there and you can actually get them. 
the, uh, you can, uh, the, the way git, for example, the command git checkout, it, it works with references, but you remember, references are just IDs. So you can do git checkout with a reference to like a particular commit and get the same tree. So how does rebase work? This is how merging works. So in the rebase, we are still at this stage. We have our own, this is, again, we are back to, to, to square one. So how does rebase work? The way rebase works is uh, we start from here, our changes from the new commit, all, new cha all the changes starts applying one by one. And here, we create a new commit. Notice that the commit is not called B1, it's called B1X, because it's a new commit. It's totally new object, totally new concept. And what, what rebasing does, it starts adding a commit on top of commit, on commit, applying the changes. And all those objects are still in the database. They are put there. So after you rebase, then you can do a, something which is called git merge. But since there is not, not two parents you can merge, you do something which is called fast forward. The fast forward means, yeah, just apply all those changes because I don't need two parents because it's just an image. And that's what basically Git works. This is how it does its magic. I don't think it's magic anymore. Like uh, the best definition of magic is something I don't understand. Uh, so how we can improve? Like I will share some tricks with you. Like there is this folder which is called Git config. Uh, the way Git config works is you can, uh, the way a lot of like, uh, Unix file system and Linux file system works is they have those files, they call them dot files. And those dot files are config files for uh, RC files, runtime configuration files for different things. So a lot of uh, programs read those configurations and you can tweak. For example, the Git, uh, so here's the links to what uh, uh, all those things. So in the Git config, you have something which is called alias. The idea of the alias is we are developers. We are lazy, <laughs> or at least I think we should be lazy because uh, laziness makes you creative. So I don't want to write git status every time. Too many strokes, you know, I have to save those. They're useful, my hands. So for example, a couple of uh, aliases I have is git st, which just does git status, which checks what's the difference between my stage area and a stage area. Git br, which is git branch, git co, I don't know, in Serbia, in Bulgaria, we have the word co, which is like a very uh, way to show you are from uh, lower villages. Uh, so, and you have all these short ways, this is a bit shortcuts, can save you a couple of keystrokes, but imagine how many times you actually write that. Also, if you're like me, I make a lot of types. Like, I, I am sorry, I cannot type very well. I, I don't know why my, most of my work is typing on a keyboard. So Git has like how to uh, uh, build it, um, yeah. So Git have uh, automated uh, type uh, um, uh, type correction. So if you mistype a command, it will try to guess what you mean. But in those two cases, in those three cases, it, they're usually when you type fast, like stash, you miss the S and hash. Sometimes it doesn't catch it. So this is a useful way for you to make typos and feel still good, feel good about yourself. Some other aliases, the nice thing about aliases, they are not just uh, shortcuts for typing people problems. They actually can, since Git is very composable, as you saw, it just reuses concept after concept. For example, you can say Git GP, which is Git pool with rebasing. You can set Git RC, which does add something, rebases and continues forward. You can do git stash, which is a shortcut. You can, you can say git wall. I will show you what git wall does in a second. Uh, you can have git diffs and, uh, and you can do shortcuts for uh, commands. So every time I was doing, uh, going to Stack Overflow and I was writing, what's a git command for X? I usually make uh, alias just to not search uh, to um, Stack Overflow anymore. I want to reduce the server load they have. Every time I find something in Stack Overflow, I try to put it in my editor. So I just make the internet better because we don't use any more traffic. Some aliases I have is like git undo. What git undo does is you just committed something, 
but you forgot to change or you have some to do there or some console lock or some debugger and now you have to remove it and now you, and, now, and this makes your history so git undo does what undo does it removes your commit keeps the file so you can commit it again git amend in Git, there is this concept called amending. That means changing the previous commit. So what you do is, I forgot something for my last commit. I just added it to the index and merged my two commits. It creates a new commit, but keeps it there. Git unstage is you added some stuff. You just unstage it. I just, just reset here. I don't, don't like it. Uh, this is what git load us is whoa it's uh, just make some pretty pictures i have git today which lists all the commits done today so i can see what my colleagues are doing without wasting internet going to github and checking day by day and for example this is how git load does it's make this uh, beautiful ASCII art of just in command and now i think you can actually start read that you see the hashes you see what are the references. They're colored in nice green, the nice yellow. It's like a picture of Picasso. If he was a programmer, he couldn't uh, draw and stuff. Uh, Git today is a bit more complicated. It just shows all the changes, which are the changed files today, what files were changed, what was picked, what was the difference there. Uh, so aliases worked well, but sometimes you need a bit more scripting power, like a lot more changes. And this is where Git gets smart. So if you have a script which is named git slash, actually you can call this script by the git command. So if you have git slash some script, for example, in your build folder, you can say git ha 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 ha. And instead of writing git slash ha ha ha, you can do git space ha ha. So one, uh, so one thing I have is I'm w we are working a lot with pull requests. Like the previous talked about to continue uh, DevOps stuff and all of that cool stuff, we do it at work. So I'm opening pull request at least one or two times a day. In a good in a good day, in a bad day, I open like six pull requests because I screw up something in the first pull request and still cannot fix it. Uh, so I had this command because how do you open a pull request? You first have to sync with GitHub, open a remote branch there, then go to the UI, like enter stuff, and that's boring. Like, I, it's mechanical work. So what git pull request does is very simple. It gets your branch, pushes it to GitHub, opens you a GitHub URL where it has your branch and you just fill up what your pull request description is and you're done. And you can just click submit and wait for reviews and drink a coffee or something. A simple command is very, I mean, it's kind of simple. You can just copy and paste it like, uh, the other one is a lot of times I'm doing rebasing on master because I don't like to uh, I want to make sure because for example if you work a branch more than like a day uh, What happens is if for example had the unfortunate things to have a feature which is a week uh, Master moves away with a lot of changes and there is conflict So what I do every morning is I go to my branch and I write this command rebase on master What it does is it just do, it gets the master updates the master to the latest version and do a rebase, handles all of this for me. And this is how it works. Gets the current branch, get out master, updates master, go and rebase my master, my, my branch, my master, or whatever. Um, also, one other thing is I, I try to keep my, my workspace quite clean. Like, and by my clean space is my computer, not my desk. Uh, and a lot of times you, you, you open a branch, you merge it, it's already there, but it's still in your system. You still see like a menu with this many branches and it's boring. So I have this command, it's called git merge. So when I'm on master and I wrote git merged, uh, git delayed merged, it just goes and removes all the branches which are already merged into master. It checks if like only the ones which are merged. So it, it just cleans up my laptop for me, like just a friendly cleanup. It's quite simple it gets the current branch check out the master the oh yeah I made it and let's go to the GUI stuff like a lot of people use the GUIs which are the github GUIs maybe the tower if you're on Mac and I'm also like I like terminals I like writing on the terminal if you like a good hacker or something like in the movies you know and stuff like that but yeah GUIs are cool actually GUIs have uh, a nice way because they present graphics. 
So I use a GUI called fork, and I don't use 99% of the fork. What I used in fork is this view, which I don't think is very well shown. It's just for committing. And because it, it has, because I just use it for committing and amending and like picking and committing fi file by file just before I commit to change what kind of files I'm going to get. So from the URL here, I just use all those three buttons like staging, moving files and just moving the GUI part just for commits, writing a good message because I need to see what kind of files are changed and in GUI it's a lot easier. Uh, so yeah, so that's pretty much what I wanted to share with you today. Thank you. And yeah, as I told you, all the git, all the links are here, and I have to find where the question area is. So I'll be there. Have a nice conference. Bye bye.